So, God creates vegetation on the earth. We already looked at the previous YouTube at this. The earth is now prepared to grow vegetation. The, the artist, God, the creator, is preparing and letting mankind know one step at a time because we're going to recreate this. God is going to uh, recreate a new heavens and a new earth. He's going to create a new heavens and a new earth. Genesis 1, 11 to 13 is where we're looking. So the evening and the morning were the third day. And we know that this is 24-hour day because we looked at Mark 10, 6. That's the end of this section here. But at the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. <clears throat> we're not going to wait for millions and millions of years for all these plants and animals to evolve into something. Because at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. They didn't have to be evolved into anything. He created them, created them actually uh, mature beings, not growing up as, as babies. <clears throat> so, Henry Morris states, Not only had rocks and minerals been formed, but so had a blanket of fertile soil, sand, silt, clay, sized particles, and an ideally graded mixture with abundant chemical nutrients and soil moisture. Then God spoke again, this time organizing certain of the chemical elements of the earth into tremendously complex systems, each with a marvelous informational program built into its chemical structure, which could henceforth specify the reproduction of other units like itself. There is no suggestion that these systems possessed any form of consciousness, but each did have its seed in itself and so had the ability of reproducing its kind. Amazingly complex. Has man been able to do anything like that? Not even close. Three main orders of plant life are mentioned. Grasses, herbs, and trees. The three are intended to cover all types of plants, and these are the most obvious comprehensive categories. It is significant that these plants were made not as seeds, but as full-grown plants whose seed was in themselves. They thus had an appearance of age. The concept of creation of apparent age does not, of course, suggest a divine deception, but it is necessary accompaniment of genuine creation. The processes operating in Creation Week were not the processes of the present era. A lot of times people say uniformitarianism, what we see today is the way it was always been. Not so. Now the evolutionists are thinking more towards catastrophism to speed up the process because they realize you know, there aren't a lot of uh, missing links and explanations for things, how they got this way. But these were processes of creating and making of God and are thus not commensurate with process, present processes at all. Matter of fact, the evolution is going into the thing called the God particle because how do they explain the Big Bang going all the way down to nothing and then coming back out of nothing? Furthermore, God did not say, let the land produce seeds which will grow into plants. Instead, he said, let the land sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees already bearing fruit with seed in them. Adam was created as a full-grown man, the trees were created as full-grown trees, and the whole universe was made as a functioning entity, complete and fully developed right from the beginning, even with light arriving from distant stars. The apparent age that might be calculated in terms of present processes is irrelevant and would undoubtedly be vastly different from the true age as revealed by the Creator. Let me correct that. Suppose time, gravity time dilation is really uh, not just a thought or a model, but a theory, an actual fact, so that anything that happens in a matter of moments on the Earth, if you looked, viewed that from the outskirts of the universe, it might take millions, billions of years, depending on how far away you are from the Earth, if the Earth is in the center of gravitational uh, force of the whole universe, and if the Earth is, uh, the, uni the universe is uniform and, and limited, it's finite, but vast. Now, that's a big if. In verse 11 occurs the first mention of both seed and kind. Implanted in each created organism was a seed programmed to enable the continuing replication of that type of organism. The modern understanding of the extreme complexities of the so-called DNA molecule and the genetic code contained in it has reinforced the biblical teaching of the stability of kinds, as opposed to the evolution of one kind into another. Each type of organism has its own unique structure of the DNA and can only specify the reproduction of that same kind. 
there is a tremendous amount of variational potential within each kind, facilitating the generation of distinct individuals and even of many varieties within the kind, but nevertheless precluding the evolution of new kinds. A great deal of horizontal within species variation is easily possible, but no vertical species to species changes. Macro versus micro evolution. Macro, no, but micro, yes. There's a lot of variation within the species. It is significant that the phrase after this kind, after his kind, occurs ten times in the first chapter of Genesis. Each organism was to reproduce after its own kind, not after some other kind. The evolutionary dogma that all living things are interrelated by common ancestry and descent is refuted by these biblical statements as well as by all established scientific observations made to date. Compare 1 Corinthians 15, 38 to 39, which indicates that there are different kinds of living beings which are not related to one another, especially via evolutionary process. 1 Corinthians 15, 38 to 39, but God gives it a seed which is sown, a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body after its own kind. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. Henry Morris states, It should also be mentioned that the formation of plants, even in such complex forms as fruit flies, occurred during, before the creation of any form of animal life. This, of course, is quite logical, but it does flatly contradict the accepted evolutionary system, which has marine animals, both invertebrates and vertebrates, evolving hundreds of millions of years before the evolution of fruit trees and other higher plants. Furthermore, many plants require pollination by insects, but insects were not made until the sixth day of creation, which fact argues against the possibility that the days of creation could have been long ages. The idea of theistic evolution is counter to the biblical record of creation in practically every passage, albeit Back in the early centuries of this country, uh, theistic evolutionists and uh, deists uh, in this country believed that, Yet they, and they quoted the Bible, but they didn't bother reading it carefully. That's all we have to do is read it carefully. Genesis 1, 14 and 19. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament expanses, uh, expanse of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let there, them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. That's for man, benefit. And let them be for the lights in the firmament, expanse of the heavens, to give light on the earth. And so it was so. Of course, the, God made light in the uh, in the very beginning, but now he's made, giving, providing, and creating light-giving uh, entities. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament, expanse of the heavens, to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. That's what we're looking at now, Genesis 1, 14 and 19. So the first topic is God creates the light emanating heavenly bodies. After he created light emanating from no place, wherever he decided to direct it, he's creator. He can do that. On the first day, God created light. First day. Then on the fourth day, he created light emanating bodies. A lot of people have to get that. He's creator. If you allowed him to have created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1.1, then you will have to allow him to do the rest, that it's specifically stipulated as such. Let there be lights. Notice lights, plural, literally in the Hebrew, mayor, or light givers. This is different from Genesis 1.3, which states, let there be light, light or singular. Let there exist the whole spectrum of visible and invisible light waves which emanate out throughout God's newly created heavens and earth, but not from any particular created source of light givers. So light was created first, and then God created light givers. Ball says, The fourth day witnessed the establishment of the sun and moon in their functions with respect to the earth. Since the sun now provides all the energy received by the earth for its geological processes, this event also has profound geological implications. Undoubtedly, there were innumerable other creative and developmental processes taking place during the six days, 